Welcome to the first of several examples on how to graph an ellipse. Because this is the first example, let's review the definition of an ellipse. An ellipse is a set of all points on the coordinate plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points called the foci is constant. So for example, if these two green points are the two fixed points, the black graph is the ellipse, which means for any point on the ellipse, the sum of the distances to the two green points would always be the same. So for example, if we found the length of these two red segments, the sum of the lengths would be the same as the sum of the lengths of the two blue segments. And this would be true for any point on the ellipse. For example, looking at this ellipse, notice how the sum of the distances to the two points is equal to six units. So if we move the point around the ellipse, notice how the sum of the two distances always stays six. Again, the sum of the distances to the two points is always equal to six for this ellipse. Now let's review the standard equation of an ellipse. Every ellipse has two axes, a major axis and a minor axis. A major axis is the longer axis, which can be horizontal as we see here, or vertical as we see here. And the same is true for the minor axis. And notice how the center of the ellipse is where the two axes intersect, and it always has coordinates hk based upon this form of the equation. But notice how with these two forms of the equation, a is greater than b, and therefore a squared is greater than b squared, meaning that a squared is the larger denominator. Notice when a squared is under the x part of the equation, we have a horizontal major axis, and when a squared is under the y part of the equation, the major axis is vertical. Also notice the value of a gives us the distance from the vertex to the two endpoints of the major axis in both cases, and the smaller denominator is b squared, where b gives us the distance from the center to the two endpoints of the minor axis. And then finally, the distance from the center to the foci is equal to c, again in both cases, and we can find c using the equation a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So going back to our first example, again we already said that the center would have coordinates hk, but looking at our equation, since our numerators are x squared and y squared, that means h and k would both be zero, and therefore the center of our ellipse would be the origin with coordinates zero, zero. Next, notice the larger denominator is under the x part of the equation, which means a squared is equal to 25, and the smaller denominator, nine, is equal to b squared. But because the larger denominator is under the x part of the equation, we're going to have a horizontal major axis, meaning our ellipse will look like this. Again, where the longer axis is the major axis, and the shorter axis is the minor axis. So by the form of the equation, we know that a squared is equal to 25, and since we're only concerned about the positive value of a, this means that a is equal to five. And we also know that b squared is equal to the smaller denominator of nine. And again, we're only concerned about the positive value of b, so b is equal to positive three. If we want to find the endpoints of the major axis, going back to our notes, notice how we just have to go a units to the right and a units to the left of the center. And since a is equal to five, one endpoint of the major axis would be this point here, and the other endpoint would be this point here. So the endpoints of the major axis would have coordinates negative five, zero, and five, zero. The endpoints of the major axis are also often called the vertices of the ellipse. And now to find the endpoints of the minor axis, again notice how the endpoints of the minor axis are b units away from the center. So from the center, if we go up three units, since b is equal to three, 
we would have one endpoint of the minor axis. If we go down three points from the center, we would have the other endpoint of the minor axis. So the endpoints are zero, negative three, and zero, three. Next, we want to find the foci of the ellipse. Notice how these are C units to the left and right of the center, since we have a horizontal major axis. So to find C, we'll be using the equation A squared equals B squared plus C squared. Let's go ahead and find C on the next slide, where we have more room. Because we want to find C squared, let's go ahead and solve this for C squared by subtracting B squared on both sides and changing the order of the equation. So we can say that C squared would be equal to a squared minus b squared. So now by performing substitution, we can see that c squared is gonna be equal to a squared, which is 25, minus b squared, which is nine. Well, 25 minus nine is equal to 16. Again, we're only concerned about the positive value of c, so we'll only consider the principal square root, and therefore we have c equals positive four. So going back to our problem, we know that the two foci will be four units to the right and left of the center. So one focus would be here, four units to the right of the center, and the other focus would be here, four units to the left of the center. So the two foci have coordinates negative four, zero, and four, zero. Before we graph the ellipse, we also want to find the eccentricity which is equal to C divided by A. This value is always between zero and one. If the eccentricity is closer to zero, the ellipse is more circular. And if the eccentricity is closer to one, the ellipse is more elongated. Well, we just found C was equal to four. So C divided by A would be equal to four fifths, or as a decimal, this would be 0 0.8. So we'll go ahead and graph our ellipse now. It's gonna pass through these four black points and would look something like this. Again, where these two points here are the foci and this blue point at the origin is the center. And just to emphasize the vocabulary, this horizontal axis is the major axis, and this vertical axis is the minor axis. And we know the major axis is horizontal because the x part of the equation has the larger denominator. Okay, we'll take a look at some more examples in the next few videos. I hope you found this helpful.